hello everyone good morning and welcome back again to another edition of moments with lulu if you're new to this channel please make sure you subscribe so you always get notifications whenever i put up a new video and for all my returning subscribers thank you so much for always stopping by to watch my videos despite my inconsistencies on this channel as you have probably noticed in the past few months i would say so this video is gonna be about my ILTX examination experience. I'm gonna be sharing all the information and tips you need to know to be successful in this exam. So basically the ILTX stands for International English Language Testing System, which is an exam, an English exam to be specific, that is used to assess an individual's, let's say proficiency, competency, or skill or ability in the language itself, which is English. And this can be used towards like, let's say, academic purposes or work or immigration purposes. We're gonna highlight the differences between the academic and the immigration work purpose of this exam. So basically the ILTS has two sessions, okay? Which is the general training and the academic training. So basically the academic piece of this exam is used to assess an individual English competency who desires to, like, say, pursue a post-secondary um, studies or course. So basically, you wish to go to um, university in a particular country or a particular school that requires you to take this exam, you have to go for the academic piece. And for people who have, like, let's say, gone to school and after school, they for some reasons decided to, okay, I want to settle in this country. I want to be a resident of Canada. I want to work here. I want to live here. You're required to take general training. Or if an employer has asked you to provide some kind of like proficiency in English, you might also be required to take the general training component of the ILTS, okay? You might see me looking down from like time to time. I just want to make sure that I cover everything that I have written down here and make sure I don't miss any important information for you all. And bear in mind that this video is more focused on the general training component which is what I took and this video is solely based on my own personal experience as of February 26th, 2022, which was when I actually started for this exam, okay? So we're gonna go talk about how one can study. Basically, there is really no formula on how to study for this exam except doing continuous and constant practice, okay? So you can set aside, let's say, time every day to decide, okay, I'm gonna do three practice tests today. I'm gonna do four practice tests today. I'm gonna do two practice tests today. I'm gonna do one practice test today for how long it depends on you. You can decide, okay, I'm gonna do two practice tests every day for two weeks onto my exam. Or I'm gonna do two practice tests every day for one week onto my exam. But personally, I would recommend for people who are looking to take this IELTS exam for immigration purposes, and you're an individual who just finished with your post-secondary education. I feel like your brain is still fresh. You have like a whole understanding of grammar, style, writing, like those things are still with you. Like you have been in school for that long, for two years or four years, that you, you know, you know how to write really well, you know how to use correct English grammar, punctuation and all of that stuff. So I would say if you're in that category of people, you want to get this exam written as soon as possible, okay? Whether or not you have your 15, 60 hours or the recommended number of work hours to pursue the permanent residency. And the reason I say this is because you have two years from the time you wrote that exam before the exam expires. And of course, you can get your work hours within that year. While you're waiting to get your work hours, you already have your IELTS exam set aside and written and completed and done. So I'm gonna talk about the resources one can use to study for this exam. It's called the ILTS prep application, okay? And that is something, this is something, I'm gonna put a screenshot on this screen so you can see because I'm sure this is not really doing justice. It's just an app you can download on Google Store or you can download on Apple Store and practice on your own. And this comes with three practice sessions. And you can also get the link um, from the description box of this video. I'm just going to put a link to the website where you can also go and practice this test as well. Some people might be like, okay, so how long did it take you to study? Personally, I studied for one week. For one week. One week was my frame and I only did the three practice tests on this application. I know I was doing it every day. I repeated the test like maybe like two more times. Like I repeated the same thing because 
it, it's not changing there's only three practice tests and you can't reset it unless you decide to buy the two extra they have here but i mean why should i spend money on buying it when i can just do three practice and just keep practicing with the same material like give yourself like a day or two so maybe you can you know absorb or forget and then repeat the test it doesn't hurt to do that that's what i did and i was successful in the exam okay so how is the test taken basically you can decide to do like a paper version of the test or a computer based session of the test and to be quite honest with you all i have done both so i know i did the academic training while i was um going to get an admission to the university i had the academic training and i did that on paper because at the time when i was going to secondary school back in nigeria you know it's not um computer training or computer education no you have like your teacher writing on the board it's more like written so it was easier for me to adapt the learning style i was used to in the classroom as a secondary school student to the exam and that is why i decided to you know go for the paper based while i did my academic training back in 2016 so this was a wow like a long time ago and when i wrote the general training which i did right on the 26th of february 2022 i went for the computer based i was actually looking to go for the um paper based because that's what i've experienced that's what i've had in the past right so i was more like oh i've done this exam in the past and i did it on paper so why shouldn't i stick with paper right but then the paper was not available for the center i was looking to write it so i picked the computer based form which is also really simple and straightforward you know you have to type you have to write you have to listen and i for me i find that um writing it on the computer was i don't know it was a lot easier for me but it depends on you as the individual it's whatever rocks your boat it doesn't change your score or anything no it doesn't so the exam itself can take anywhere from um 2.45 hours so that's how long i had this exam for okay and the required score by the immigration for the IELTS exam is you have to get a score of so it's called band it's it's called like band band score so this exam has the reading section the listening section the writing section and the speaking section and they require you to get at least a band six across all of them or a total of band seven in terms of like what the exam specifically requires for the reading components it just wants you to like you know for example they are going to give you um some passages so you have to just read and answer questions based on the passage and for the listening component there is actually like an audio so you have to wear headphones to listen to the audio and write your answers as the conversation goes it could be one a monologue and the second part could be like a dialogue between two people like an actual conversation okay so it's just about your ability to listen and grasp the information is what they are testing on for the listening piece and for the reading piece is the ability to actually read like a passage or a paragraph and answer questions based on what you've read okay and your writing piece requires you to maybe the first part is gonna be maybe you have to write a letter to your friend like a very simple um, letter and the second piece might be somewhat like a debate like sharing your views on two topics or one topic and saying why you agree or why you don't agree so it's just assessing your writing skills your ability to use punctuation marks and you know go through the whole english language grammar writing essay style like you do in school typically that is why i say it is best if you are able to get this exam in as soon as you finish school because you, you your brain is still fresh you still grasp english very well and you still know how to write how to punctuate how to use um correct grammar okay and correct um, english content writing style okay and the last one is the speaking test so basically the speaking test is more like a face-to-face -face, um, kind of session where you sit down and opposite you is gonna be your should I say instructor or your interviewer so it's the speaking test is more like an interview that can take anywhere from um, 15 minutes up to 20 minutes and they might ask you to share your views on a particular topic they might you know ask you get to know you a little bit and you know they just want to assess your ability to speak the um, language it's not about cramming so this exam is not about cramming 
various vocabulary it's more about knowing the english language like knowing your like your pronouns your parts of speech your vocabulary i would go ahead to share some tips let's say for example you're a person who is not so confident in the language or in speaking you can learn by just you know hearing others speak speaking along with others trying to push yourself to converse in english you can also like read um read books read simple articles newspapers watch youtube videos like watch youtube videos literally that is how i mostly studied for this exam because like i said the application only gave me three practice tests but i went as far as you know watching videos on like speaking interviews speaking tests and that was where i got the highest score so this didn't help me for the app didn't help me for the speaking test because you don't really know what you're missing in the speaking test because it just records you on the app for practice but if you go on youtube and type english language speaking test band nine listen to people who have high band scores like band eight band nine and you'll be able to you know pinpoint because they also give feedback so the interviewer is not just you know interviewing the person for the speaking test but they have mock so it's called mock speaking test IELTS where they are giving you feedback on what you can improve on in terms of like your pronunciation your range of uh, vocabulary your ability to like express yourself in the language as well so there's a lot of things you know that they are looking out for so I really advise to use the YouTube audios and like the videos to actually study for the speaking test and for the writing piece just to practice just to practice with what they have here and you know you can also go on youtube to see you know what people have written feedbacks they've gotten from, from like their instructors or whatever and you can also use the app itself because when you're done and you submit the app gives you like the um, written piece of what they're asking for and you can use their answer to compare your own answer and you know make changes as needed and see where you can improve on and for the listening like I said it's just you have to be calm because you can miss one or two words you have to pay attention critical attention to the audio okay no distractions at all make sure you're in a quiet environment where you are away from every single distraction and for the reading it's all about just you know, keep reading materials read be able to you know distinguish how to answer questions don't try to like cram or memorize this is not an exam where you can cram or memorize anything it's based on your practice of the um, sessions of the test okay so you have to practice 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 that's all I can say continue to practice and I mean um, English is not the first language of a lot of people which is quite understandable but for the purpose of this exam you have to keep practicing and the fact that you've gone to school in english for four years or two years that should also like guide you a lot okay all right so the next thing i want to talk about is um my own personal experience so this is going to be raw and um undiluted so most of you already know i already said i took this exam on the 26th of february i scheduled it in february because i just didn't want to wait so in my head, I was waiting to get all my 15, 60 hours towards my permanent residency, which I already did. But in saying that, you don't necessarily have to wait to get all your hours. But I was just waiting. I Right now, I don't know why I was waiting, but you know, I already took it. My overall score was 7.5 with a band score of 8.5 in speaking. That was actually my highest. And I feel like that was my highest because I was able to actually get good feedback from listening to people who spoke on YouTube and their instructor giving them feedback and my writing and listening section was more of in the sevens and my, my writing actually was the least of my score which was a 6.5 but like I said you need a 6 across all the bands and at least a 7 to be able to meet the immigration requirements because and again the higher your score the more likely you are to get more like ranking score towards your PR profile if that makes sense yeah and also one more thing to say is that the price of this exam so it's not a cheap exam I would say and this is something whereby you know you just don't want to rush to take the exam but you have to think about the cost of the exam prior to going for the exam because you don't want to pay three hundred and twenty dollars yes that's what I paid I paid three hundred and twenty Canadian dollars just to take this exam and that is not something you want to throw out two times three times no study well you have quite a good number of time after school 
you can set aside one week two weeks depending on what works for you it's all about your formula to study just so you don't go pay $320 times two times three but if you're someone who is looking to improve their score just for the purpose of immigration and you have so much money you can go ahead and take the exam the second time and that's not a bad thing okay it's not a bad thing at all and another tip for this exam is you can actually ask to have your exam reassessed or remarked if you feel like you know you don't deserve the score you got but there's always an additional fee for that i'm not very sure how much the fee is to have it reassessed but you have to pay an additional fee if you choose to go through that route okay and also what is required for the exam is you're gonna you know have to take your passport you always need your passport your passport is the only form of identification you're going to accept they won't take a driver's license or a national id no what they want is your passport that is what is required to take the exam and yeah you just have to go there with yourself and your passport and that's all you need every material will be provided for you at the desk they're going to provide a piece of paper for you a pencil for you headphones will be provided every single thing will be provided and the thing is if you didn't have your passport they won't let you write the exam it's just plain and simple you're gonna miss it for that day and you have to reschedule and they won't give you a refund so you want to make sure that you're paying attention to your confirmation email and bring in all the required materials or documents that they have asked you to bring to the exam and you want to make sure that you arrive at the exam 30 minutes before once it's 15 minutes to the start of the exam they will let you in I've seen that happen and they will stick to what they've said so yeah that is everything about the IELTS exam. I hope this video has helped you. I hope this video sets you up for success towards your English language testing examination for those of you who plan to write it now or sometime in the future. And for any other further questions you may have about this topic, please feel free to leave your questions in the comments section of this video and I will be happy to address as best as I can and to my most recent knowledge following the writing of this exam okay thank you so much for watching i appreciate your coming to this channel please don't forget to share don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and i will see you all in a subsequent video bye now